Ladies and gentlemen, please be aware that foul language is prevalent within the following production. Have a nice day. I'm not joined by anybody. I'm a loner. A loner, Dottie. A rebel. <laughs> so, this week we're just going to kind of, I guess, talk about some stories and some things that have gone on and discuss some um, polling that was done over a question that we had posted on the Facebook page. But uh, first, I wanted to talk about um, a concert experience I had yesterday. Well, please, go right ahead. So, um, usually if I go to concerts, it's because people say, hey, I'm going to go see so-and-so. Would you like to come? And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Maybe I'll like them, maybe I won't like them. But a friend of mine told me that a performer I like called Girl Talk was going to be in Atlanta. And I was like, oh, sweet, I'll go. Now, the tickets were a little bit more money than I probably should have spent. But I was like, well, I'm not doing anything Saturday night. There's another band that I just started listening to that I really liked that were there. I was like, fuck it. I'll do it. So, it was called Party in the Park. It was in Centennial Olympic Park. And it had five different groups. And, I'm trying to remember who they all were. It was Stokeswood and Minus the Bear, which are two I never heard of. And I didn't even get there until the very end of those two playing. I've heard the name Minus the Bear before. They're like indie stuff, right? Yeah, I heard like the end of their performance. They weren't bad. Um... It wasn't anything that I would, you know, run out and buy or anything like that. But they weren't terrible. And then the Joy Formidable, which they were amazing. And then MGMT, which is I don't I don't know I'm not on enough drugs to like. <laughs> and then Girl Talk. So, like last year, I went to Mayhem, and Evan, you went to Mayhem yes. too. And that I'll be was, going this year. Okay, see, that was like my first kind of multi-band kind of whole day of music event I've ever gone to. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of expecting it to be a lot like that. It was the opposite. (laughs) Like, and it could just be to the venue. So, like, Mayhem is in, like, like the fucking desert. Just rocks and (laughs) dirt. There were salamanders and fucking cacti. (laughs) I mean, like, within, like, 30 minutes of being there, I felt like I had the consumption from all the dust in my throat, you know. <laughs> but uh, this next, was... Next on stage, the Desert Raiders! <laughs> what? No, run! The Desert Raiders are here! <laughs> Holy shit, is that Mad Max? <laughs> I mean, that's what it felt like. Because all the dirt's getting kicked up. It's just so so miserable. But this was in, like, the park, so... Most of the time, people are just kind of further back or just sitting down, chilling out, having a good time. Enjoying the grass. Yeah, exactly. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there was that, but there was that also at Mayhem. And pretty much any concert you go to, I think you just have yep. to deal with that. So, Fucking dicks. But there was it was a lot more laid back and, I don't know, like Mayhem to me, it was people just running around and like, there was the moshing and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, this was more of just kind of like dancing and people chilling out and chatting and having a good time. So one thing I saw, though, it's like, you know, Evan, you do the, the windmill spin kind of thing in the pit. I don't know what the fuck you call it. It's called moshing. <laughs> Some people call it hardcore dancing, but it's still moshing. Yeah, you like, have so push mosh and you have regular mosh. Well, like, yeah, you're spinning your arms around really fast and stuff. Kicking like a, and jumping yeah. and... Mm-hmm. So, it was kind of funny because when one of the bands was up, people were doing that same move, but, like, imagine it, like, taking down to, like, one mile an hour. So, like, their arms are just spinning really slow. <laughs> <laughs> They're like juniors. It's, like, level one for beginners. <laughs> yeah, literally. That, it's just kind of people, like, slowly spinning their arms around and things like that. <laughs> Don't worry. Nobody's going to kick you. You're safe here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just don't go but, to a Mad Ball concert. You'll be fine. 
But yeah, so that's the first thing I thought when I saw that was your spin attack thing you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all these people are in training for it. They're picking but, uh, up change one mile an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like at the end when Girl Talk performed, I actually went down like the dance area. And that, like, just so much energy. It was so crazy to be down there with all those people with it, while everything's going on. And, and in Jules, how much energy are we talking? <laughs> oh, man, off the chart. Oh. I can't even... I can't could even, we go back in time from the energy? We maybe could. <laughs> we maybe could. Because the thing is, he performs normally for about 45 minutes to an hour, but he actually ended up doing an hour and a half. And that's because... Uh, one guy who he's done stuff with before called Freeway came out and did some stuff with him, and then Waka Flocka, who's from Atlanta, came out too. And so that his was fucking name cool. sounds like a Pokemon. I always think when I hear Waka Flocka, I always think of Fozzie Bear, Waka Waka, <laughs> <laughs> or Flocka Seagulls. Yeah, it's like what if Fozzie Bear had his own band? It'd be called Waka Flocka. <laughs> and he's just or- like swoopy hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Please forgive us, Fozzie Bear. <laughs> yeah. But, man, it was pretty awesome. I want to... Now, I was like... And I, the thing is, I didn't go with anybody. I just went by myself because, like, nobody I knew would want to go. Or if they could, they didn't have the money or it was just too short a notice. Because I was just like, ah, fuck it. Let's go. Dude, uh, uh, side rant. People get so upset about doing shit by themselves, but please agree with me on this. Going by yourself to certain events can be fucking awesome. Because you don't have to deal with anybody else's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was part of the thing about this. Was like, I, you know, I went by myself, but I got to meet some pretty cool people, too, just sitting down. You know, at one point, I'm just sitting there. I, I grabbed something to eat. Like, they had a bunch of food trucks there. And they had this one that had, like, Vietnam food. And it was really good. So I was sitting down just eating the sandwich I got. And this person was like, come sit on the blanket. So I just came and sat on the blanket with a group of people. And we were just talking. Wow, so that's I, really nice of them. Yeah. How about that? And then, like... uh at one point oh so the only thing that got me all night long was <laughs> I don't know if you saw I posted this on my I Facebook <laughs> alright so in an event like this there are porta potties of course because there's so many people mm. and the porta potty line was about 15 minutes constantly and it wasn't like men's women's it was just whoever the fuck went in there used it so we're standing in the line and this girl, who finally it's her turn to go, she walks in barefoot into a party. And the, the, the gasp from the line was audible. Like, everyone's just like, <gasps> like I can't believe that bitch is about to walk in barefoot. Now, don't get me wrong. There were a lot of people walking around barefoot. I mean, it was, you're out in the park. It's really nice. It was great weather because it wasn't too hot. It actually started getting cold by the end of the night. But to go into a fucking porta potty barefoot? <laughs> I mean, this bitch was crazy. I mean, I so many threw drugs. Up. She had to be something. But like, if the well, she just she fucking hates there, herself. <laughs> the moment she walked in there, everybody in the line's like, "Oh my god, is she just going there? No shoes on." God. No oh, yeah. amount of pedicures will ever fix those feet. I mean, I, I don't Never. know. She probably got every disease in the world. That's right. <laughs> Walking in there. Boy, I how mean, humans have fallen, man. As much as humans used to, with the terrible conditions back in the past where nobody wore shoes, wow, I'm surprised we survived. <laughs> well, I they also know. had foot and mouth disease. <laughs> you people also died at like the age of 40 that. back then, too, so. <laughs> True enough. But man, <laughs> talk about a shitty way to fucking start your day off on the wrong foot. <laughs> oh, a double! <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> it was. I, I literally, I was like Hamada retching in my head. On the <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh god. It was so. That was. But that literally is the worst part of the night. Even later <laughs> on, like near the end of the the final performance, like there is. The, see, here's another thing. There's a lot of. There were. A, a, I think the best way to put this without sounding terrible. Just oh, sound if terrible. You're going to fail happen. then if you. Think there were about a it. lot of women there. A lot more women there than I've ever seen at any other concert. That like, does there were guys terrible. Too. Oh my no, no, god, how'd you stand but, it? No, no, no. <laughs> there were, the thing is, is that most of them probably weren't even old enough to drink. Most of them probably weren't even old enough to vote, if I had to guess. <laughs> <ask. laughs> 
And so I'm down here in the <laughs> dance area, and there's, a, I mean, I'm not like the, by far, I'm not the oldest person. But there was a, one of the people I talked with was a family. It was like a mom and a dad, and they're like teenage kids who they all wanted to come because they were like big fans of Girl Talk. So, which that was cool. But so being down in the dance pit, it's a lot more women than there are guys because you can see all the guys standing up on the top just like looking down. I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But at like one point near the end, I was like, well, I don't want to be down here when he's done. And everybody starts trying to leave because it'll be a pain in the ass to get out. So I started to make my way out while they were still going. And I'm standing on the edge still listening. And these two young girls, I mean, shit, they couldn't have been. I'd be surprised if they were 16. Ugh. Basically, come dragging their friend out, and I could tell she was on something drunk or high. I couldn't tell, and she's just falling all over the place. And they get her, and she just they drop her down in the grass, and she's just laying there, still talking. <laughs> then a few minutes, and they're just sitting there, just thinking like, "What the fuck?" A few minutes later, this other guy who I'd seen walking around, this big dude looked like Kevin Smith. I mean, he looked just like Kevin Smith. <laughs> Comes stumbling out of the crowd, and he just falls down on his back. <laughs> and like as he's laying on his back and music's going, he's still jamming. Like he's still like rocking out, like dancing while laying on his back. <laughs> so his body look like the ocean just waves well, jiggling I, about. At first, I thought he was just playing with his nipples because like his hands are on his chest. And I was just like, "What is this guy doing?" Everybody walks by, looks at him, and I asked him like, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Yeah, man, I just I just got to lay down." I'm like, all right, okay. <laughs> And I saw it, and his friends came up eventually to make sure he was okay, but he was just laying there with his, he wasn't rubbing his nipples, he was just kind of moving his hands like he was dancing, it just so happened, that's their favorite position. <laughs> that's some shit that would only happen at a concert. You walk in Target to the fucking cereal aisle and fall on your back. <laughs> Dude, are you okay? Yeah, I just had to lay down. <laughs> that would be hilarious. No, nah, you're blocking the fucking Cocoa Krispies, get out of the way. <laughs> now, so that girl that was like laying out, who I who looked like she was on something. And she started throwing up at one point. And I looked at her friends. I'm like, you probably need to get her some water or something. We don't have any money. I'm like, okay, let me go here. So I went over and bought her a bottle of water. Well done. I, was like, I was like, so uh, <laughs> you guys got to get her out of here. because I was like, she, there's no way she's going to be able to walk by herself. <laughs> and they were like, oh, our car's parked, blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, I'm parked over near there. So I helped them walk back with her to the car. And she was just like, falling out <laughs> i don't know what she i don't i don't think she was drunk i think she had done something else like maybe she had taken molly or something i was about to say was her name molly yeah i it think she had night. probably done molly or something and so she was just like all over the place and the, you get down in the dance pit even if you're just kind of barely moving it is like hot because everybody's you know packed in there tight and she was probably down there and that stuff makes you super hot and sweaty so Hmm. But some bullshit was that at the end of the night, like, all the the concession places, I understand not serving food, but they weren't even serving, like, water or anything at the end. And I was like, what the fuck, man? I was like, these people are coming out from down there. They probably need water. You could probably charge, like, $10 a bottle now if you wanted to. Because <laughs> I had to basically get the guy. It's like, listen, here, just give me a bottle of water. That girl's over there throwing up. I mean, <laughs> she's literally less than 10 feet away. And he's like, I ain't supposed to because we're supposed to be closed, but okay. It's like, what the fuck, man? Like, I ain't supposed to take any extra money after time. Yeah. Pretty much. But so, man, Evan, next time I, I go to something like that, you should come. So you can get in the dance pit and get <laughs> So here's what I'm thinking. That, that's a great idea. <laughs> this is what I was thinking, though. Okay. You're on the street. There's a concert happening. We'll say it's a street party. Mm-hmm. There's a dance pit of the, of the EDM, I believe, is the name of the music. Yeah. Of an EDM variety. Everything's going great. All of a fucking sudden, Mortal Kombat 3, <laughs> the ground shatters, and they fall right into the middle of a fucking hardcore dance pit. There's like 15 skinhead dudes just like punching the air. All of a sudden, brutality, and the fucking breakdown's playing, dun, 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 and they're just like, oh my god, and there's like 17 rib cages going everywhere. Mm. That's how my brain works, ladies and gentlemen. I see. Okay, I don't know where that came from, but... Because every time you said dance pit, all I can um, think of is just, like, some fucking huge guy in a basketball jersey throwing spin kicks. <laughs> <laughs> like, some dude with his ears stretched out five feet 
doing the windmill and just like going crazy and somebody stage dives on this poor helpless girl who's like got a, a fucking glow stick she's like I love dancing boom I'll say this too there's something about like even if you're not somebody who normally would dance but there's so much energy starts happening that like if you're down there you just just go with the crowd you just, everybody's jumping and dancing and doing whatever <laughs> I mean they're white people dancing so it's terrible but <laughs> well actually uh, Shane and I and some of our other friends had an experience firsthand with that type of dancing. <laughs> we went to a club back in the day. Uh, was it still called Rockabillies back then? I think so. I think it was called Rockabillies, but it was like it was like a dance club. So we go there and we're all hanging out. And our fr- one of our friends there is named Stuart, and we were like, Stuart, dude, you got to go out there and dance. It's so much he fun. He did that on his own. No one said anything. He totally I thought we did. egged him on. No, he totally did that on his own. I take that back. Stuart grew the balls of the group <laughs> and went out there. And I've seen some silly dances in my life. There were some sillier <laughs> yeah. ones than the one that Stuart did. <laughs> but he looked fucking amazing. He did. <laughs> it was like a. Sh- it was like he just couldn't make his mind up about what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean like he looked confused. I mean he was shrugging his shoulders and throwing <laughs> his hands in the air like, what's going on? I don't understand this. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like looking around at girls and it was like almost like Night at the Rocks where it's like, you talking to me? Talking to me? Just like back and forth and it was just like all of us are just standing there. It's like, he did it. He really did it. <laughs> he might look silly, but he really did it. A friend of mine named Dax, he does stuff like that. Like, he, I remember one of his dance moves was he'd be sitting there and he would talk about, so you put like your right hand under your left armpit, you sit there and kind of like rock. And then you pull your hand out, put it to your face while you're still rocking. And then you're like, oh, it stinks. So you put it as far away as you can and move your hand while you're rocking. And he's like, he called it, he had some name for this dance move. But all his dance moves were just like normal things you would do while rocking. And so, but when he, he do it really fast, it looks like you were really dancing, which is what's so sad. <laughs> Did you but, pull that one out at the dance pit last night? There's not enough room to extend your arm in the pit. <laughs> um, um, unless you're extending them upwards, which you, you know, you did a, a lot. What did you do? Give us the name of your moves that you that you did. The white boy bounce. The white boy bounce. <laughs> <laughs> if only this were a video podcast, you could actually see it. Can you explain it in terms of? It's pretty. Movement? It's pretty much bouncing, swaying back on your back and forth on your feet. There's not really a lot of movement to it. I mean, <laughs> there's jumping, but I think that's a common white person alternative to dancing. Is white men can't jump. <laughs> Except for Kyle. But when there's a lot of them around, you can't really tell. It's just a sea of white people bobbing up and down so if you happen to be on the up when somebody else is on the down it looks like you're jumping really high it's all about perspective <laughs> i will say this i am not a fan of the dubstep or any of that shit but some of those dancers do some crazy looking shit oh no was, yeah like was, the, it, was this like wob wob music was that what this wob is wob no music. no no girl talks all mash up so like what he'll oh, do okay. is he'll take something like like you'll have some ACDC or something in the background of the music, but then he'll take like some rap lyrics that mixes them together, and it it's really good. Like I, it's hard to describe. Like I'll ha- I'll link you something simple and quick that you can listen to of his. Like there's a lot of people that mash up two songs, but somebody broke down his mashups, and he'll have like six different things going at once. But sometimes maybe he's just taking like a bass track from something, and then he's got like a guitar from another thing, and then he's got lyrics from this and then he's got you know backgrounds from somebody else and it just flows really well Well, but it's it's yeah it's pretty good and there's a huge discussion on like um the legality of his work it's like because he's really Ah. just taking everybody else's and making it but like a lot of performers love him like Buster Rhymes performed with him at Coachella and Waka Flocka did it in Atlanta so I mean these are fairly big name people who are okay with it but it's mostly hip hop stuff, and then he'll take things from other places. Well, of course they can't say a thing in hip hop. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like I'm going to listen to. I bet you I could go and I could listen to a rap song now, and I would know the lyrics to ten other rap songs that I haven't heard. <laughs> or you would hear the music and be like, "Oh, that's that song from 2001." Exactly. That's like a drug dealer going to the cops. This motherfucker stole my drugs. Yeah. <laughs> hey, give me my drugs back. <laughs> You're under arrest. What? But he stole from me. <laughs> so. I have one last thing, and this is for our listeners out there who drink. So this concert was sponsored by Desperados, which is this beer that's like blended in tequila barrels, so it's got a tequila flavor to it. It's the worst fucking alcohol I've (laughs) ever drank in my entire life. And I'm not the only one. Like At one point, like everybody's walking around drinking Dos Equis, which is like this Mexican beer. It's really good. 
when I first get there. And then eventually no one's got it anymore. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. Because I had one, and then I took a while, and I was like, well, I'm going to grab something to eat, and I'll get a, a Dos Equis. And I w- walk up, and they're like, we're all out. All we've got are Desperados. I was like, okay. So I get it, and it's so bad. And at one point, at the end of the, sh- the concert, like, these MCs come up there, and they're kind of, you know, think, say we should thank these people and these people and these people. And they're like, and we should finally thank Desperados for holding us. God, everybody booed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I hope this wasn't a, you know, a good marketing ploy, because if so, your beard <laughs> did not take off. So, if you're out there and someone offers you a Dos Desperados and tells you it's tequila blended beer, you tell them to fuck off, because that shit is terrible. There's a reason it's called Desperados. That's the only you're... time you'll drink it. <laughs> yeah. yeah <definitely laughs> All right, boys, we've been pinned down for days down here. <laughs> the, 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 the it, Texas Rangers is all over the place. It was so bad that at one point, I'm standing there in between two of the, the groups, and I see the guy who's like pushing around basically he's like bringing ice and other things to the booth or on the other side of the place and he has like several cases of Dos Equis. people are following him to <laughs> the booth to buy the Dos Equis because they want it so bad compared to like the Desperado shit <laughs> maybe they think due to the marketing if they drink that they'll be interesting <laughs> maybe it was terrible did it make you more interesting after one bottle I didn't even finish it. I threw it away. I drank half of it, and I was like, oh, no. I'm not, I don't, Fuck I don't, this. I'm cool enough as it is. <laughs> no, it's more like uh, I want. I might want to get a little – I mean, I didn't even get tipsy because I had to drive back to Athens. But I was like, I may want some alcohol, but I don't want it bad enough to drink this piss. <laughs> and I just was like, give me a bottle of water. That's <laughs> what I call the Shane, the Shane Tipton art of the expensive drink. Please <laughs> explain your theory. Oh, the people who get a drink – it doesn't have to be alcohol. It could be anything. It's like, this drink costs $5. And they, they taste it. It's like, this tastes terrible. But I'm going to drink it because I paid $5 for it. <laughs> At this point, you've made two mistakes. One is you bought the drink. That's an understandable mistake. You didn't know it was bad. But you've already spent the $5. So you might as well just, just give up on it and not drink the terrible drink on top of it. Why punish yourself and lose money? <laughs> right. it, it depends on how much... I spent on something. Like, when I was in Vegas... What the spent, hell? Hold, on, hold on, hold on. When I was in Vegas, <laughs> one point we were going to order drinks, there were $21 for a drink. If that drink... and I mean, it didn't taste bad, but if that drink had tasted bad, I spent $21 fucking dollars on it. I was still going to drink that. That's drink. great. <laughs> it's like, all right, sir, come in. All right, it's $20 to come into this room, sir. Oh, okay. $20. You go into the room. This is the brutal beating and rape room, sir. Would you like to leave? Huh. You did pay $20, though. You should probably stay. There's a there's a difference between <laughs> having a room that's brutally beating and raping you yeah. to comparing to like, oh, well, this doesn't taste that great, but I still want to get kind of drunk. I'm going to drink it anyway. <laughs> but what if it had been a the soda? Thing is, is with all, of, all the alcohol here was like $7 a can. So it was all expensive, but it didn't matter what you got. It was all 7 bucks. So That's why I sit it, with water. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I had... One Dos Equis, then I had half a Desperado, and then I said, oh, this is disgusting, and <laughs> I was done. Do you know it would be great if they fucking sold at concerts? Squeeze-its. Remember those fucking things? <laughs> yes. I fucking love squeeze-its. And go And go would be awesome. The blue one? <laughs> Dude, I would, I would squeeze five go in my mouth at the same time. <laughs> go is so disgusting. Get I'd be like, oh, the potassium! <laughs> That would be a good thing to sell that, those in like Capri Suns because let me tell you what you drink one in like one second yeah totally and then I've you're like well now I need another one <laughs> where what concert where, I thought they were at Mayhem I remember somebody had some kind of like stick a straw in it type drink shit I wish I would have fucking <laughs> rock paper scissors I'd be like rock paper scissors for your drink right now I'll say t- <laughs> another thing too that I think made this better than Mayhem was Mayhem having like a the end of July, beginning of August, and it was so fucking miserable hot that like, I don't, I mean, I don't, I the people who went all day, I just don't know how they did it unless they were just constantly drinking water, which then you're constantly you're basically spending two hundred dollars on water because that's oh, how yeah. expensive it was. Oh yeah, they didn't. They attacked other caravans for water because you're in a desert. <laughs> desert <riders. laughs> Like, Until the savior of post-apocalyptic XDX <laughs> showed up, and he removed his cow and went, ah, and fucking blew up Zed's gang. That's right. But, this is the North Star, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, talking about mayhem, and you said you're going this year. Evan, you mentioned to me 
I think it was beginning of this week or end of last week, so about something about being metal. And I asked, what does it take to be metal? Well, you need to conduct electricity and heat really mm -hmm. well. There's a certain structure you need. Well, not all metals conduct. Some conduct better than others. Some are poor conductors. It also, like, depends that if would I... be power metal. Okay. <laughs> Hair Maybe metal. Like, like ballad metal, you know. Hair metal. Mm -hmm. Pop metal. But So, Evan, for those people out there who might not know... And I always hear you talk about being metal and, and about metal. What does it exactly mean to be metal? And once you just explain it, I'll give you some situations and you tell me if it's metal. <laughs> okay. Now, I have, to, I have to put a caveat here. I'm not as metal as I used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, more, I'm more of a positive hardcore guy these days. But I still am pretty well versed in the ways of metal, having spent most of... Fuck out of spending all of my 20s and teens there. Having been like a child raised by wolves, while you might still be human, yes. you, you still are mostly wolf because of the way you were <laughs> that raised. That is true. You Absolutely. were raised by metal, so you're still mostly metal. I still take advice from the demon in my head. Okay. If that's exactly what we're talking about. When but, did you get to be a silver hawk? That boy, that boy with snakes in his head? You're, you're partly metal <laughs> and partly real, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just hope I'm not the fucking copper one that's like, because that would be a horrible existence. He could be like, help me! There's a fucking tapeworm in my guts, and it's like... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the it's other like, ones oh. understood him just fine for some reason. Man, how the fuck did that work? It maybe been in the maybe they shoes. didn't. Maybe they just made up whatever they wanted him to say. <laughs> it's like, hey, uh, could you do the dishes? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. He's, he's glad to. And just, I they feel just like walk you off and leave him. the dishes today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what does it take to be metal? Okay. Frost... Spikes, <laughs> skin, wool paint, corpse paint, and pure black metal. Pure black metal. That's all it's all about. From Blaschik. Black, black metal from Blaschik. That's a quote directly from an interview with the black metal band Immortal. And I think that nails it pretty close. But the qualities of a metalhead, if you hold were to say... Hold on, hold hmm. on. Frost, metal... Spikes. War paint. Spikes and war paint. Skin, war paint, corpse paint, pure black metal. Okay, so... That's all it's all about. So unless you're constantly wearing that, you're not metal. <laughs> that's, that's black metal. That's pure black metal. Oh, that's pure, pure black, black pure metal. Black metal. Okay. Sometimes pure we black. alloy it with other things <laughs> yeah. so other people can do it. <laughs> it depends on if it's been recycled. You know. <laughs> but no, uh, metal for the most part requires these qualities. Shaved head or long hair. Definitely. All or nothing. Okay, so you can't have, like, the Bama swoop? <laughs> you might, but you would have to make up for it in other ways. Okay. <laughs> so let's get into some of the other characteristics. So it's an, it's an all or nothing on this, this list. This isn't a checklist. Like, I have to have all these to be metals. Like, you just can have majority of them? I would say that if you have enough of the variables, you can be counted as a whole. Okay. <laughs> but it's a the, point system. Yeah, it's a point system. It's okay. cuz like you can see like one of the most metal dudes I know in my entire world is a guy named Joseph. He has a very nice haircut. <laughs> he works at Best Buy. He tucks his shirts in. He likes polos. But the dude is a fucking cornucopia of metal knowledge. <laughs> so as you see there there can be lots of variables in this and as long as the sum of the parts <laughs> equal up to a greater whole, you're good. <laughs> so let's get into some more of the other characteristics. Hate. <laughs> burning hate. Burning. Anger. Anything? Uh, society. Authority. Okay. Religion. Somebody's like, I uh, hate apples. I fucking hate apples. Like, oh, that's pretty metal right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Especially that voice. Because, you, know? <laughs> you know, like depending on the metal that you're listening to, Typically, the more aggressive your voice, the more metal you are. You know, you got s some sort of metal, like the, the proto stuff, like Deep Purple, you know, back in the 70s, okay. the singing. But these days, you have bands like Obituary and fucking Dying Fetus. I don't know how that motherfucker gets his voice to sound like that. It's all like... <laughs> and I, it's a, that's, that's, a, that's a fucking Barney the Dinosaur version of what he did. Smokes <laughs> 10 packs a day. And it's so funny. Because you will find that the people who often have the craziest vo vocals are often the most soft-spoken. Like Cannibal Corpse, their, their ex-singer, Chris Barnes, he talks like this. And he's a very calm guy. But you read the lyrics and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with that guy? <laughs> I should know because I memorized all of them in sixth grade. <laughs> but back to the list. <laughs> Sorrow. Sorrow, as long as it's not accompanied by swoop hair. 
and neon colors. And eyeliner. And eyeliner. <laughs> now, makeup see, is that, different. I was going to say, yeah, that goes back to the <laughs> face paint shit, though, man. Yes. Now, if you if you have... Here's, here's the rules. If it's going to be makeup, it can be three colors. Red for blood, white and black for death. Mostly white and black. King Diamond, uh, like... Any black metal band, like kiss, kiss, kiss. Red, red can be used here and there, but you don't want to look like a fucking ladybug, like that asshole in Mudvayne. So, like ICP, they've got the white and black. That's you know. they, they now they're pretty angry. They're pretty, <laughs> yeah. they're pretty violent. So there's, you'll see a crossover of death metal fans who like ICP. They also like wrestling a lot. I like, I like how they're getting confused. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, well, they got the black and white. They must be metal. I it's guess like, I'll listen to them. <laughs> it's like you got like a disco dancer that happens to walk into like a rave club, and it's like, well, this isn't exactly my cup of tea, but I can move to this. <laughs> you know, it's it's like it's all universal somewhere. Yeah. So let's get back into some more qualities. Um, you can wear tight pants for certain types of metal, but they have to be men's jeans. The minute that you buy women's jeans and you're a man, it's no longer metal. <laughs> So you just have to find the perfect pair of pants that squeeze your testicles for goodness knows what reason, and that would be metal. Um, camouflage, very metal. <laughs> is it? Camouflage is very metal. Like you look at death happen, metal I bands, it. <laughs> they always have some camouflage pants or shorts on, camouflage hats. It <laughs> spills over into the hardcore scene as well, but it's. Were they trying to hide with all that camouflage, Evan? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Probably, depend, if it's one of the death metal bands, probably a body. <laughs> Piece of, pants. Pieces of bodies that they have oh, discombobulated. Uh, let's see. What are some more characteristics of metal, Shane? Help me out here. I don't know. You're the expert. The, the, now, the scream is very metal. Like, if you can get a good Banshee-esque wail, I'm hoping Shane will interject at some point and show off his metal I, I, I scream. Can't, I can't do it anymore. Let me see if this is going to be terrible. Like I said, I've, I'm very don't, far removed. Don't do from... it directly into the mic. I don't want to deafen <laughs> me or the audience. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just turn my head. <laughs> no, no. That's a Slayer scream. Okay. That's like Slayer. That's uh, that's that's your '80s metal, not quite glam, but like thrash. <laughs> it starts out high, but then it goes into like a. Ugh. But it's very important to hit that falsetto at some point. Unless you're King Diamond, then it's always fucking falsetto. <laughs> well, you know what? It's kind of... Things are starting to actually make sense now that you talk about it like this. Because, well, if you're going to wear tight pants, it's probably going to help you with that falsetto. It probably is. Now, there's the a... The tighter there, the pants, the, the higher the note. There is a DVD of Ozzy Osbourne that I saw as a child where he actually, actually squeezed his own balls to hit a note. He was singing, Mama, I'm Coming Home. And he fucking squeezes his nuts, and he goes, I'm coming! And I was like, whoa! Mm -hmm. Whoa, I'm coming home. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And I just remember rewinding that over and over again. I was like, did he really squeeze his balls to hit that note? And hey, you know, just like on Major League, maybe you got to put a little snot on the ball. <laughs> Whatever you need to do to get where you got to go. Yeah, man, the dedication. Like, are you that dedicated to your art, Evan, that you would crush your nuts? Well, as again, I am no longer the the metal warrior that I once was. But that was not my my side of metal. My side of metal was more the death black metal. So I usually just wore regular fitting black jeans. But very important are boots. Boots are another form of metal. The the that's, more the, that's, that's Evan's Shaolin training too. Yes. If you can learn to play double bass drum, <laughs> double bass drumming in fucking boots as opposed to sneakers. You're you're gonna be just fine because that's how I learned. Because you can't move your fucking ankles at all. Wow. Yeah, I was about to say that. I still remember when he switched his shoes. He's like, all this time, <laughs> <laughs> all this time. It was like a pair of like 1994 Airwalk skateboarding shoes. I was like, these shoes are magical. How did this happen? Why didn't I know? Because like all I had were like these big black boots that go up the legs with like steel plates on the shins and like spikes coming out of them. So like if somebody got in a fight with me. I could kick holes in their face, <laughs> which I never did, but right. But yeah, I was always ready, <laughs> always ready. But yeah, so the bigger and the fucking crazier your boots are, the more metal you are. 
Like, even if you take Lady Gaga, who wears big crazy boots, <laughs> she often talks about her love for metal, which makes me love her a little more, too. <laughs> really? I mean, I yeah. could see her being down with almost any type of music. She's very open, it seems. I think she's beautiful. A lot of people think she's ugly, but I think she's beautiful. She writes her own music. But back to the metalist. <laughs> the metalist. 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 Uh, wolves and dragons, very metal. This is, this is starting to sound less like metal and more like D&D. <laughs> D&D is a huge part of metal. Because, like, if you take metal... Holy shit. <laughs> I just had an amazing idea for a band. Let's hear it. It's a band, and the entire band, like, whenever they do a show, it's them role-playing. But it's always been to music and singing. And so, like, every song is about some kind of crazy encounter. (laughs) That part's actually done, minus the role-playing. That would be awesome. I want to make a song called No More Orgs, and only only Kyle's going to get it. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, there's a band called Bolt Thrower. And they had straight up Warhammer songs, songs about the Warhammer universe. Well, the Warhammer universe is fucking brutal. So exactly, it, it, it's, that is metal. I can I can <laughs> believe that. There's yeah. a band called Balsa Goth that stro- that wrote about uh, stuff from Forgotten Realms, <laughs> and wow. uh, they were like they were like a they were almost a power metal band, but then they just remembered that they're a death metal, black metal band, so they never <laughs> actually sung. But they would wear like fucking orc costumes, and they would have like grandiose pictures of like mountains and fucking crazy dragons spewing ice <laughs> on the cover and it was just amazing <laughs> but wolves dragons very metal tigers metal a band called tigers of pantang from the 80s super metal <laughs> super metal um let's see right. this noise <clears throat> very metal <laughs> you can listen to any celtic frost song that was ever written and you're a, a guaranteed at least a <clears throat> or a <clears throat> one of those two so they say getting punched in the stomach. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> or getting indigestion from a fried mushroom. <laughs> yeah. One of my friends, Stick, actually made the Tom G. Warrior, the singer of Celtic Frost's noise, when he choked on a on a deep fried mushroom at the Rickery once. <laughs> he went, huh! And I was like, dude, you just quoted a fucking song from Morbid Tales by Celtic Frost. He was like, hell yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What else is metal? Um... Headbanging. You don't have to have hair to, to headbang. It might look silly if you don't have any hair at all headbanging, but people still do it. <laughs> That's a very important thing to do. Let's see. Um, old vans from the 80s. <laughs> very metal. They're, they're figuratively and literally metal. <laughs> metal. <laughs> like most cars from the 80s are probably metal. Yes. Yes, very metal. <laughs> Especially if there's like a mountain with a warrior and or, a woman wrapped around his or leg. A wizard, painted on the like side. a wizard, a wizard. Throw, like, throwing spells yes. on the side door. <laughs> Indeed, that is so metal. Um, it sounds night- less metal and more neckbeard now. Like if we're going on, I'm like the 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 gap between metal and neckbeard is starting to blend together. Neckbeards often fall into the metal category, and slowly they discover their own balls and they become metal. <laughs> but prior to that, it's usually like J-pop and video game soundtracks. But they're just like, I'm so angry in my neck beard. What will I do? So it's and kind of like... It's, it's a graduation. It's a crossover. Like, some neck beards are metal. Okay. And some of them are just creepy guys who play with their nipples at MGMT concerts. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been Kevin Smith for real. <laughs> I don't know. He looks so much like Kevin Smith. I always wanted to get his autograph just in case. <laughs> oh man, let me think. What else is metal? Inverted crosses and pentagrams. You can have the pentagram right way up or, or upside down. Either way, totally metal. <laughs> uh, to a lesser extent, crosses, because Black Sabbath was, you know, the forefathers of metal. They mm-hmm. had crosses. Religious symbolism, period, of any religion is, is pretty metal. Goat heads. Goat head. To, oh, dude, I was so happy this week at work. I was. I've got a really great smartphone now, and I was looking around on YouTube, and I found the demo of the band with one of the greatest names ever, Goat Whore. Yeah, I've heard of them. Goat. I actually had the pleasure of seeing them in concert and hanging out with them. Awesome dudes. But the fucking name, Goat Whore, that's one of the most metal things that you'll ever hear in your <laughs> life. That's because it's like when you hear the word Goat Whore, you're not going to be thinking about fucking... You're not going to be thinking about James... Uh, Taylor singing a, an acoustic interlude mm-hmm. and then singing about his wife who paints beautiful pictures. You're not going to be thinking about Madonna dancing at the nightclub. 
You're going to be thinking about. I might actually think about it. Goat horn. Horn. Well, that would have to be a very hairy and horned Madonna. <laughs> like though the thing from the Unnameable, that movie. Hmm. That's maybe she's a goat horse. See? She had a very nice butt though. Whatever her name was. All right, so <laughs> here we go. Okay. You've given us all this stuff. There's way more, but I'm going to stop. All right, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I have a feeling we'd be here all day. You would. So we'll take this as the, the major stuff of being metal. Because I figured you would name the more important stuff first. Do you have to listen to metal music, though, to be metal? <laughs> At some point in time, it would need to come into your path and you would have to enjoy it. Okay. I'm quite, I am ask this because you told me that I was metal. And I'm like, I really don't listen to metal music that much. Like, there are a few bands that I'm like, oh, they're not too bad. Oh, that's all right. So I'm like, how can I be metal? I don't know if I meet most of that criteria, Evan. <laughs> You meet a lot of the criteria. Okay, which ones? I don't. I don't own a metal van. <laughs> That's true. I I owned a van, but it was not painted with a sorcerer. Yeah, it was a minivan. It was a minivan, but I was still metal. <laughs> Everybody has the metal within them. Holy shit! Don't tell me that a minivan is metal. A minivan is soccer mom. You were basically one step from a soccer mom. Are you telling me soccer moms are metal because they drive vans? They could be if they were hot enough. Do you carry what dead bodies? Hell? Do you carry dead bodies in your in your soccer mom van? Do you carry instruments? Do you carry drunken people around? Mm-hmm. All of these things can fall under the shade of metal. It is a, it is a great demon in the sky that casts its shadow everywhere. I don't know. I, to me, it's starting. What it takes to metal just sounds kind of like whatever Evan thinks would be cool. No, like <laughs> hot chicks. That's cool. No, if we you're come hot to chick, the you're metal. The matter. You don't think hot chicks are metal? Look at the entire '80s metal scene. What the hell? Every band member looked like a girl, which brought more girls to the show. That's metal. I mean, I don't think it not, works that it's way. It's not metal. They're probably really hot ballerinas that have nothing to do with metal. Yeah, <laughs> but they could be metal. Well, of course they could be metal. That's what I'm saying, man. Metal's in everybody. They just have to awaken it. <laughs> I want to use this excuse for everything I do. I'm just going to walk into the bank, go around behind where I'm not supposed to, just take the money out and just start walking. Up. Where are you going, sir? You're stealing that money. It's like, it could be my money. <laughs> yeah. It could be. <laughs> it could be my money. <laughs> no, what you do is you <laughs> walk into the bank. <laughs> Let me tell you how to fix that situation. You walk into the bank in the fucking skin of a wolf with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> and you stare that security guard down and you make him cry with the fiercity of your eyeballs. <laughs> the fierceness of your gaze will make him drop his gun and cry. And then you walk right behind that register <laughs> and you look at that woman right in the eye and you kiss her. And you give her the best kiss she's ever had in her life. <laughs> and then your fucking horse kicks the door down. <laughs> and Holy you, shit! And you leap Am over... Am row? Yes! <laughs> row with metal! You leap over the fucking desk <laughs> with both hands full of cash money and the axe on your back and you climb on the horse and everybody has fallen to their knees and they're looking up at you <laughs> and a fucking guitar solo happens <laughs> and then all of a sudden you just fucking take out of there and the fucking speed of your horse kicks up dust and everybody's just covered in black soot staring at you go off into the fucking sunlight that's how you steal from a bank because you're metal. Well, I'll be damned. No, first, you'll be metal. <laughs> first of all, I have to be aroused somehow. That's going to be difficult. You can arouse it within yourself. <laughs> Where am I going to find a horse like that, too? He's got to be out there somewhere. <laughs> Kokuo, where are you? we got to rob some banks. <laughs> what kind of fucking world you live in, Evan. <laughs> it's a pretty awesome one. <laughs> that world would be quite interesting. I'll give you that. I mean, it's one of those things like, that's really crazy, but if everybody's running around doing it, then <laughs> it's not nearly as crazy anymore. You know? Dude, they call me a dreamer. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> you know, imagine a world. <laughs> <laughs> imagine a world where everybody can be round. <laughs> That would be, think about this, okay? How much more simple would it be? This 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 is breaking off into partial rockabilly territory. But if the world was like River City Ransom, somebody steals your girlfriend, so you just beat people and take their money to become more super badass, and you get your girlfriend back, and that's the end. And anytime, anytime somebody bothers you, you beat them up and take their money. <laughs> 
<laughs> but if you don't, if they don't bother you, you just walk by them and it's like, hey, see you at Merv's Burgers. <laughs> I'm gonna get a fry with a free smile from the waitress, and then I'm gonna blush. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Well, you should. If you, I th- I believe in you, Kyle. You can find the metal within yourself. You're angry enough. You've already got the head shaved. Those are two very important parts. You're already, for all intents and purposes, the guitar player for Demi Borger and Old Man's Child. All you have to do is grow a little mustache and name yourself Galder. Galder. Yeah, it's it's a Norse figure. Uh, from their from their folklore, but it's also his name, his stage name, Galder. Okay, his Galder? stage name. His real name is probably like John. I've heard it's of Tom- Galder, but it's I don't Thomas. Know Galder. It's Thomas. 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 Yeah. T o m a s. He's a Norwegian fellow, uh, and his mustache looks ridiculous, but it's okay. He can do whatever he wants. If so, also, if you need other ideas to what metal is, just go buy a Celtic Frost album. <laughs> That's all you got to do. To, I, I would say get Morbid Tales and Dethroned Emperor if that'll teach you everything you need to know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm really picky with the metal music that I have listened to that I like. Most of it I'm just kind of like, um, okay. <laughs> Close. Like, who was it I listened to that I actually liked recently? Their album. Was it Agalock? Yep. They were really good. That album was pretty badass. Those motherfuckers are deep in the D&D. Yeah. I want to... Well, um... <laughs> A friend of mine was telling me that one of them, like if you look at their touring schedule, their touring schedule is set up so one of them can actually teach because he's actually an English adjunct professor for some university. Mm-hmm. So, and, I mean, if you and if you really listen to the music and you see what they're, it's a lot of nature type stuff they're talking about. <laughs> it fits in with like their whole concept of uh, like his in, transcendentalism and stuff like that, and, and writing and things. So that definitely amuses me. I just imagine them as like they're singing and it's like what's two of them's name? John and Don. <laughs> Me and Don went and killed someone today. Ah ah ah. Don and I killed someone today. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. If you want to know how D and D they are, let me give you a little sample of their lyrics. I saw the night fall. It called to me like a river of shadows. <laughs> and he says it just like that. That's awesome. That's 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 some dungeon master shit explaining what happens to you when you walk into a dark elf territory. <laughs> is is this elf territory that is dark or a dark elf territory? Either or. Acceptable. Sh- There's, There's a big shadows. difference between the two. <laughs> There's shadows that in both of them. Elf territory's gotten a little dark, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Whoa, you just crossed the line. <laughs> but yeah, I think Adelaide's coming to Atlanta <laughs> on the uh, end of June, so I probably will go see them because it was pretty good. So I have to tell you this. I went to the Renaissance Festival yesterday, and I saw a group of people dressed like dark elves, and they, they, they all had blackface on. Uh, and I was yeah. like, you are racially insensitive! <laughs> and I just kept walking there like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's like uh, when we were at uh, Dragon Con. Why? Power, Ranger. Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke, I love it. It is because when you do it, people stop and they're like, "What?" And then you see the Ranger, they're like, "Ah, oh, <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> I get it, old Tommy." <laughs> I get it, or Jason, whatever his name is. Hey. Tommy was the green one. I'm bad. No, the green the one guy. is the white. Yeah, green, the green one, one, one is the white one. <laughs> Red were... one never changes. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. The white, the white and green Ranger were the same person. In the first series. Yes, that's correct. You know, that might have been why he changed the green. Because he was the white Power Ranger. No, he was green first, then he yeah, went to white. He was oh. green first. Oh, never mind. That's yes. even more offensive. It's like, oh, being green isn't good enough? He's got to be white? <laughs> is that what it is? Green it Ranger had only been cool. worse if like the white Power Ranger killed the black Power Ranger. God. Let's, let's avoid this subject altogether and go right into the next one. The pole. <laughs> All right, so... A poll was done. By Kyle. Well, it was put up on the offenders, and Evan put it on his pay on his Facebook, and I put it on mine. I also put it on my Twitter. Um, <laughs> but so the question that was asked was, is Evan Jones a piece of shit? Now, listeners of the show will know that, yes, he is. <laughs> so, 
this was not done as a test to see if Evan Jones is a piece of shit because we all know Evan is a piece of shit. This was done as a test to see how well Evan is promoting the podcast across his Facebook page. So the options were, of course not. He's a fine young gentleman. And the other was, hell yes. Mm -hmm. So 15 votes for hell yes, 36 votes for of course not. That means that 71% of people don't think Evan Jones is a piece of shit, which means that Evan is not promoting the podcast successfully. <laughs> Evan, what are you going to do to correct this? Well, first, <laughs> I'll ask you how long you've been working for Fox News. How long have you been working with them spinning this? Um, I mean, it's fair and unbiased coverage, Evan. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly my point. Now, I believe the ratio was 29% of people thought I was a piece of shit versus 71 knowing that I'm not a piece of shit. That's not a ratio. That's actually a proportion. Proportion. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. I can take a correction. I'm like yourself. So let me correct you on this. 71% of people know that I'm not a piece of shit. 29%, 29%, which is Kyle at like seven different free Wi Fi spots. <laughs> no, it's not. Me and Shane both voted twice. <laughs> yes. I voted once for myself, and then I, I fucking ask people on Facebook because I'm an upstanding, honest gentleman. <laughs> it's funny how you say that, Evan. Like, two, four, six, seven, eight of those votes are me, Kyle, and Stuart. <laughs> See? Well, because we were curious, I was like, I don't think people can vote twice. And then we both opened up different. We all opened up different browsers. Like, oh, they can. So <laughs> but we didn't get out, We didn't go crazy. We just voted yeah, like, we just did. I would like be twice. willing to accept your argument if you had labeled it that way, but you didn't. No. So let me tell you this. No, you can't. I gave you the floor. You got to give me the floor. Study. What are you, Bill O'Reilly, talking over me? <laughs> Cut his mic. Cut his mic off. You guys can't do that. Here's my point. I'm going to give you. Three things that 29% is not a success, a successful percentage for. Number one, passing any fucking test in the world. 29% is failure. <laughs> Number two, rain on the fucking weather channel. 29% of rain means that I have no fucking idea what's going on tomorrow, but I'm going to guess. <laughs> and number three, the percentage of... Is it safe to put my balls in something where it could be hurt that I would say no to? (laughs) So if you feel okay with a 29%, whatever you said, (laughs) proportion of putting your balls in something and thinking they're successfully not going to be hurt, then maybe Kyle is right. But we know that's not true. So Kyle, you can go ahead and accept your defeat and change that the fucking insult to Evan Jones is a jerk 29% of the time and I'll accept that. <laughs> well, that's fine that you're wrong, but um, you're still a piece of shit. <laughs> to <What>? Kyle <laughs> and Shane and Stewart. Well, technically. No, that's still, it, there's still 15 people. There are other people that yeah, voted for you as a piece of shit other than us. That's the thing. There are, people who, there are other listeners of the podcast that will to bed. <laughs> we'll see. I'll say too. One thing I did because I knew everybody was going to vote the other way. Yeah, it, because and, well, yeah, because it wouldn't be said. funny if it was none. Let, it needed to be some. Well, yeah, let me <laughs> let me go ahead and remind everybody where Evan Jones is a piece of shit came from. It came from the very first episode of the podcast <laughs> where I discussed Facebook and how on Evan's Facebook, everybody, no matter what Evan's like, Evan could be like, I just took a big dump. Everybody's like, Good job, Evan Jones. You're amazing. Best shit ever. Giving out awards true. for it. <laughs> That's not true. It's I post shit all the time that nobody even looks at. <laughs> so that's that's a false premise. No, no, it's not. Anytime you, it's one thing to post a picture that no one comments on, but whenever you post something that's about what you've done or about you directly, people go ape shit about it, and they're always like, "How amazing you are!" <laughs> that's and so the moment you posted that on your Facebook and people didn't go along with the joke, it was obvious. That you're not promoting the podcast. Do you even care about us anymore? <laughs> I'm here, aren't I? And the reason, and the reason that I couldn't say that's what it's about is because this was a blind study. It had to be done blindly. Because if it wasn't, then it would skew the results. Gotcha. Yeah. So what I can do is I can walk up to a woman and give her a yes or no box and not tell her what it's for. And if if she puts yes, then that means she has to go on a date with me. That's what a blind study is. Are you correct? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you heard that, women. According to Kyle's logic, if I give you a fucking checklist and you click yes, you'll have to find out what it is because no matter what you choose, if it says yes and it's what I want to do, you're fucked. Well, that's why you don't agree to anything. You don't know what the fucking choice, you know, what its results are. Like if somebody also, just says yes, or, say yes or no. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Fuck you. What am I answering yes also, or no to? Also charge them twenty dollars, Evan. That way they paid for it now, so they might as well just go oh. through with it. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Make it, take it. Find your Nike shirt before you go. I dude, I I saw a fucking super awesome pair of Nikes on Zappos, and I was like, can't do it, can't do it. <laughs> Turning to Bella, I right? can't do it, can't do it. Can't be the fuck. I can't be that guy. Well, you and just can't like, wear Nike. You just can't wear Nike shirts. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, I have yeah, the shoes don't say anything. That's true. They just help you catch your target. I mean, um... <laughs> Acquire my... Uh, go after my dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Achieve your goals. That's right. <laughs> Reach my target. They're super badass, though. They're, like, black and green and purple. They look like Unit 1, but they were Nike <laughs> Airs. I was they like, actually Man. made some Unit 1 Nikes. Yeah, I saw those, too. They made some for uh, for all of them, didn't they? I think so. Yeah, I but they were, like, $400 because there oh. were only, like, three pairs made. Yeah, they're, yeah, exactly. It was like when they made those Back to the Future shoes that actually auto-laced. Yeah. They've been saying they're going to make them fuckers for, like, two years now. It's like, we're going to do it. And then the first year, they were, like, April Fool's. And then they are like, we're really going to do it, but it's going to take a while. It's yeah, like, of course it's going to take a while. You've been trying since 1985. Yeah. November 5th, 1985. That's the day the cost of them. Like, it would be so expensive that, like, they couldn't... It would have to be a limited run thing right now. Like, they couldn't just, like put them in stores because the average person probably wouldn't buy them but some crazy collector or fan would hmm. dude you like half the fucking air jordans are ridiculously priced the oh only people God. who buy those are people who have completely expendable income and there's, that's like there's always like fights after they have when they come out too like <laughs> riots and shit in stores because there's usually <laughs> so few of them or people getting robbed after they buy them mm-hmm. it's so crazy and that's why we at Nike have a public public service announcement. We know our shoes are badass. And that's why when you buy the shoes, you walk into this chamber, the door closes behind you. The shoes come through. Now, put the shoes on immediately. Because once they're on, no one can catch you to rob you. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that commercial. <laughs> Dude, that would be fucking awesome. That would be the best commercial ever. Well, if... They could get sued for that because you know the people that make those shoes that are like they fit your foot and they have little holes for your your toes and stuff and they're like have oh you yeah seen those? The, yeah, yeah I've seen them those guys got sued because they said that those are supposed to assist with helping you run better mm-hmm. and the thing is is that when they did studies there's no proof that says that there's no conclusive proof that says that it, it does so they had to actually do a class action settlement because of yep. that mm. yeah they got toe up but Oh man! I, well, with the bad pun, I think it's time to end the, end the Yeah, we're dude. We're almost at an hour today. We suck, talked about a lot of shit. I know. So let's hurry <laughs> and finish it. So if you have any questions or anything you want to send to us, you can send us at theoffenderspodcast at gmail dot com. I'm Kyle. I am a jerk twenty nine percent of the time and a gentleman seventy one percent of the time. And I. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>